I was asked by, uh, and I felt a little bit honored uh, by the uh, Creative Skills Europe to uh, organize a, uh, a series of inspiring, uh, I, I, we hope it will be inspiring, but I, I'm happy to have you, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm very uh, comfortable it will, will be to uh, inspire the creative industry to just use new, uh, new skills. And like we just mentioned, uh, experimenting with, with this tool to record the sessions in high quality, uh, it, it shows that you, that you learn every day. Eh? But you're, Andrea, you're in, um, in Boston. Eh? Maybe you should, you should explain to, to everyone who doesn't know you, of course, yep. who you are and how you end up in Boston, of course. Yeah, good, good. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Trees, for organizing this. It's really a, a pleasure for me. It's great to reach out to so many people and, and if possible, be helpful to uh, you know, new new people that uh, new professional they want to start new careers. Um, so yeah, my name is Andrea Pierolo. I'm originally from Italy. Uh, I moved to the United States in eighty ninety three um, uh, to study first in New York. So I was studying music at Manhattan School of Music there. Um, and so as a training, I, I'm I'm a musician. I'm a bass player. You can see from my bass in in the background here. Um, so but I moved to New York and I started studying there. And then I. Um, I uh, did my undergraduate studies there. Then I moved to England for uh, to do my master at the University of Bristol. Great place, loved it, loved England. It was a great experience. And then I moved back to New York to do my PhD in uh, com jazz composition and performance. So and once there, I started working and teaching and playing and writing music. I've always been very active in in uh, both as a writer and as a as a as a performer. But I always had technology. Uh, as one of my strongest uh, um, areas and, and definitely one of my strongest uh, interests. So, um, you know, fast forward a few years later now, I've been in Boston for 16 years and uh, I'm the, the chair of the Contemporary Writing and Production Department at the Berklee College of Music. I've uh, been, um, again, at Berklee 16 years since I moved to Boston. Uh, and that's uh, where I am, you know, I'm an educator, uh, active educator and administrator, but I, I keep very active as a as a writer, uh, mainly for TV, theater, um, arranging and producing different artists around the world. So when you when you presented to me this idea, I thought it was a was a you know it was great for me to yeah. to be part of it. Um, hopefully, I can you know contribute in meaningful ways. Yeah, because I I found you thanks to uh, Google. Uh? Uh, because I was I was looking at uh, the, the people who are a bit pioneering in in digital space, and and it's something that caught my eye because already in 2014, when you already wrote about uh, sampling and and creating new sounds with digital, you know, and it and there's a lot of fear in the um, music industry that actually. Uh, you don't need to play anymore. Eh? The tools can replace you, but but you feel strongly that that's never going to be the case. Uh, if I'm right, correct. yeah, right. So yeah, my 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 approach has always been well. As I said, I I love new technologies. I mean, I always been looking to um, kind of see what the next wave of things are. Uh, and and that's that's a great lesson I learned from um, uh, Gary Garrett, and he's is a one of the pioneering uh, music libraries and was the first one to start an orchestral library. Um, and so I talked to him many times and, and he always, you know, his, his vision was always, uh, you know, just look for the next big wave, what's, you know, what's coming next, you know, and, and you, you want to be on the, on the side of uh, the one, the, 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 the people, the, the group of people that see the, the, the next wave before it comes rather than then copying the new thing. So, um, and so, that's always been my philosophy too. And so since, uh, you know, 2014, when the, the iPad came out, uh, it was one of my first uh, really big uh, interest in new technologies. And I thought, oh, this would be a great platform eventually for music production. I mean, it, it took a while. I think now is is definitely mature for that, but uh, right from the beginning, I started experimenting with it. Uh, at Berkeley, I was one of the the few that started using it, uh, you know, to teach, to present, and and so and and that 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 uh, you know passion for technology and new new technology has always been in me. 
but it really found a nice uh, outlet when the iPad came out. So, but but I've been interested in technology all you know since I was probably ten years old. So I you know started with with MIDI and with producing music uh, in my garage with uh, the old Atari ST, uh, and uh, you know and then moved from there. So uh, I always been also a big um, fan of using technology to uh, in, in, in improve creativity not to substitute it right so to me those are tools that ultimately really um, inspire me uh, make my job more creative but ultimately it's really up to us uh, you know the creators to to make the decision so that's that's to me it's always been that balance between the two so I don't yeah. rely only on technology yes no so if you talk about uh... Um, uh, new technology can you see that a lot of people are a bit afraid of using it because i sometimes i you think it is the young people who have an advantage but i don't uh, see age really a, a big difference in in using the new technology am i correct or um because you, you do um, you have it as a, as a course on on berkeley yeah? Uh, I really, where you say how to do, uh, it is recording production with the iPad, which yeah. is which is uh, quite new to me. Uh, I don't see that happening uh, everywhere in Europe as really learning people with, a, I call it a very democratized price way of being creative. Um, yeah. How uh, is that? Uh, was that um, something you had to fight for, or or is it because? Um, well, I I think in general, I mean that's an interesting question. Uh, are younger generation more open to new technology? I would say in a way, yes. Um, um, there is definitely more of a um, uh, open mind to to use new tools, uh, and in fact some of these tools are the ones they are growing up with right so it's not i don't even see i don't even think that they see them as new it's just what they are what what they use right i see my daughter she's she's 13 and she's you know all, she's really learning from youtube and you know using new technologies and things like that so she uses the computer you know all the time and basically ipad and all these things um so I'd see that probably newer generations have a, a slightly more open mind. On the other hand, um, and, and, and yes, I mean, you know, maybe more mature um, professionals have a, or some more mature professionals have a little bit of harder time to break the, the mold with which they create, with which they produce uh, art. Um, and so, but on the other hand, um, you know, I teach the same course also for Berkeley Online that has usually a more diverse population. Uh, and I see uh, people of all ages uh, really embracing the iPad as, as, a, as a creative tool, especially for music. Uh, so that's an interesting thing. I think it's more like a, a set of mind rather than um, just uh, generational. Uh, you know, it's just, um, uh, you know, there are people that feel very comfortable in their comfort zone and they use the same tools. and um and it's totally fine you know i mean yeah. I, but but sometimes i think uh for a creative person to me to go out of your comfort zone and try new tools uh often these new tools are um, a source of, of new inspiration and bring you to areas of your creative uh, mind that you were not aware of or you know were not um able to to, to develop so i think that the new tools to me again that the technology it's really a, a, a way to inspire new creativity. Yeah. You know, ultimately the, the, the art is in you, the music is in you, but 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 sometimes you kind of recycle all things because it's is a hab is that a habit, right? So you become like a you know, like a it's it's an easy way to just create things that you are comfortable with while introducing new tools, suddenly you have to yeah face new challenges yeah new cha new change new ways of working uh, i i always give the the sample of even if on top of the mountain it's a uh, paradise the, a lot of people don't want to climb it eh? mm -hmm. you have a you have a lot of skeptical people when it comes to small devices different tools uh, online tools lightweight tools um how do you convince them <laughs> um 
Well, the, my approach is always to show the possibilities, right? Um, is to show what you can do with, with these tools. Uh, it's not to force them to use them by saying, hey, look here, there is, there is this all new um, horizon, right? All this new um, landscape that you were not aware of. Uh, let's check it out. You know, see if there is something that works for you. Not, not everything has to work for everybody. But often I find that uh, these my students go like, wow, I was totally, I was blown away by the fact that you can do all these things with, for example, an iPad. And as you said, the other, uh, you know, the, um, the other advantage of this technology, the new technology usually, usually is that they are cheaper, right? So they suddenly allows people that uh, don't have a big budget to uh, to create some amazing um, work of art. You know, it could be music, could be drawing, could be film, right? Could be visual. So um, to me, that's 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 how I try to get to them. And 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 again, to me, it's like find the right tools that work for you to unleash your creativity. Yeah. So the, the more tools you are exposed to, especially at a younger age, the more you can find your way, yeah. right? Because I think with arts, it's a lot of finding your 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 ways, so, uh, both business-wise, but also create, create creation yeah. and creativity-wise. Yeah. Are you someone who's who's sometimes uh, using a new tool for a new project so that uh, as an excuse to? <laughs> yes, absolutely. As I said, I like to, you know, to me, when you create, the more boundaries you can put, uh, the, the more focus your, your creation is going to be, right? So I always make the example, they, they tell me, okay, write a piece of music. It's like, whoa, I mean, that's that's a lot of, you know, open territory. <laughs> uh, Let's make it so, difficult. Right, it, yeah, it's like, okay, paint something. Okay, well, then then you, it's up to you to put some boundaries, right? So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna use this, uh, this style or this this tool of palette of, of you know for painting colors, right? Or or I'm gonna use this type of uh, synthesis or synthesizer, or I'm gonna do it all on the iPad, or I'm gonna do so. Yeah, having new technologies um, uh, 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 is always a kind of a sort of inspiration for me. Say, okay, I'm gonna try this. You know, let let me just do everything with this tool, or the, everything with this synthesizer, or everything with this tool, or uh, sorry, sound sound palette. So. You know, yeah. yeah, I definitely do. Use yeah. the limitation to increase the creativity. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Exact. Keep it focused. Yes. Yeah. I compare it also with painters. Eh? You know, the moment that they put the oil paint into a tube, that's where the landscape art yeah. uh, became popular. And I think with the iPad, you have the big advantage that you, that it is mobile. Eh? So do yeah. you see the fact that you can take it along that it's lightweight? Uh, how do you see that? Uh, does it also mean is that you use it a lot in rehearsal environments where you do uh, a quick recording, or do you how 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 would you say it really touches the creativity? Huh? Yeah, well, I think there are two main aspects of specifically of the iPad that I think are are really big selling points. One is the definitely the portability, right? As you mentioned. Uh, I, you know, I have students uh, on the online course where uh, one actually last semester was a pilot and, and, you know, he said, I'm just bringing my iPad and a small keyboard and I can write music, you know, anywhere I am. Hopefully while not, it was flying the plane, but, you know, <laughs> when the plane was, <laughs> when the plane was, uh, was uh, on the ground, but, but um, it yeah. created some very nice work. So portability is huge. Yeah. As a, to 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 sketch out ideas, as the other big thing, right? You know, the the old-fashioned way of doing this was, you know, with a portable tape recorder, right? So, you know, older composers, or sometimes I, you know, well, I switched to the phone, but you know, older composers would have those small cassette tape, and well, they were, you know, outside uh, on the plane or on a bus or a train, they would just sing their ideas in the in the recorder. And now, then we switched to the phone, right? That's that's way easier but now um now you can just catch it out right on the ipad or even on the phone you know you can run the, the small daws also in on the phone so suddenly it's not just um, you know jotting down an, an idea by voice but it's actually creating it and create a sketch that then you can expand when you're at home so that's there's definitely the creative part but also as you said you know the recording part um, I can go to a rehearsal with, uh, you know, my iPad, a, a, a small audio interface and some extra uh, preamps if I want. Everything fits in a bag, like a small bag. 
and I can record an entire band easily and then go home and, and uh, use the multi-track and, and edit it and add more tracks uh, on top of it. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the possibilities are really limitless, but uh, really infinite. But, but the, the, the point is that, as you said, that this can be done by pretty much anybody. I mean, and the quality, uh, you know, is, 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 is great. I mean, there's, there's, I always tell my students that there's no reason why you shouldn't do um, a good product, you know, a good, a good piece of music. Uh, and if you don't, it's not really because of the, the quality of the tools these days, you know. It, it, <laughs> it's the, that, the quality of the, of the player and the musician. Uh, that, that it's, it, exactly. That's the, that's the component. That's where this all uh, technology comes back, right? And, and the, I mean, the relationship between creativity and technology comes back because the tools are pretty amazing compared to what the Beatles used to have. Right, I mean, um, yeah, but the, there's the four track. Uh, yeah, exactly. Going back and forth and double, double over, double right. over, double. Yeah. And they were not saying, "Oh my goodness, I only have four tracks." They just wrote great music. So these days, uh, we have access to some incredible technology that is really affordable if you look at it. Um, so now it's just the creativity. That's the component that we bring in, uh, and that's where uh, you know. Uh, you, it's it's a it's a it's um it's a journey right in your life right you you, you get uh, I mean you get more experienced and you learn new things and and uh, also from a, a creative point of view that's how you you grow and yeah. that's how you hopefully get better. Yeah. Do you see a difference in 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 how things are in America and in Europe? Because you you mentioned before you went to Europe once and you were amazed that. Uh, you still had the feeling that we 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 are a, a bit behind of course it, it depends on on the time and the and and things move fast on on the use of digital tools and the openness in on the educational level to 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 teach it that's an interesting question um i i think um i, I wouldn't compare it as you know forward or behind uh, i think both uh you know, both the U.S. and Europe are really excelling in maybe slightly different areas. Um, I think that uh, that the, in in all the areas, I think now the gap uh, is is <laughs> is, is it's yeah, it's getting you know really really close. Yeah. And in fact, I, I know you know of of, of initiatives in Europe that are really. Uh, you know, avant-garde, and there are some areas in Europe, like Berlin, or you know, other other places in, in France or you know, Paris, where where there are, you know, great electronic music um, uh, hubs and and really really creative. So I think in terms of experimentation, in terms of creativity, I think probably Europe is, um, in my opinion, is is probably more of a leader. Um, on the education level, um, I think that, that again. I, I speak for where I teach, where I work at Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley has always been kind of like on the cutting edge of of including technology both in the teaching and uh, and and you know in the kind of everyday life of the students. So, um, so, but I I see that probably um, uh, you know some model of the cons old cons quote unquote old conservatory in Europe you know is having maybe a little bit of a harder time to adapt. To these new technologies, these new, 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 um, you know, new tools, and and particularly how to incorporate these new tools in the uh, pedagogical model, right? So how, in the actual, you know, how do, how do we apply this to uh, a class and yeah. in, in a class environment? So yeah. I, I think both both have pros and cons. And what I like though is that um, the exchange now because of the technology actually is 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 uh, it's uh, you know is is more frequent, and and, and so there. Are, Many things that now are cross, uh, you know, going across uh, the Atlantic, and and there are more collaborations. And I've been collaborating, you know, with, with people in Europe and, and and the U.S. And I think that all divide now it's definitely definitely more blurred. And I, again, I I, I think the things that that you're the, the, this uh, this symposium, this this or this uh, the things you're organizing is it's it's great. I mean, I I wish there were more initiatives like this to just show what's available, you know, and, and have people exposed, you know, to, to new deals. Because the problem is also a little bit, because if you go to YouTube, 
the, it, there's so much out there. Uh, you know, there's there's uh, tutorials about comparing new tools, comparing new software all the time. But at a certain moment, you, you get a bit lost in, in translation. It is too much, eh? yeah, yeah. Um, too much information. You don't know what to do first. Uh, I think right. yeah, you need some some guidelines and some some right. people leading leading the way. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, you, you need that that uh, mentorship, right? That that that's that's not available on YouTube, right? It's so on YouTube is to me is very useful for people that are more experienced and can quickly go to a, a specific thing they are looking for. And because they have all the background, they understand. You know, first thing that is, and if that video or that tutorial is legitimate, has you know has some validity, but also understand all the background that 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 specific task or or or, or um, skill uh, or you know, technique is is based on so they they know how to relate that to all the rest um, otherwise it becomes as you said sort of like a a big a noisy place where you know you might grasp something but if you're if you don't have the the, the structure of having even having it either organized in a in a course where, where where you grow from you know a basic concept to a more advanced concept or a mentor that says hey you have to do this first it's kind of like you know learning piano and say yeah okay you see somebody playing you know a Rachmaninoff concerto and then a twinkle twinkle little star and then it's like well okay but how do I go from you know from this simple thing to to the complex thing um so there's no workflow you know so I I, I think uh again having a mentor that could be you know, a private teacher or could be a course you know uh, an online course or could be a more or in-class course I think it's crucial you know, and, yeah. and that structure is priceless, you know, yeah. and also having checkpoints and feedback, having yeah. feedback from somebody. I mean, that's that's crucial, you know, saying, well, you did this right, but try this other thing. I mean, to f feedback is it, that's what teaching is about. Really, right? so. I, I think that's a, an interesting point you just mentioned, because um, you tend to um, we see that with the struggle now with the pandemic also online courses tutorial things like that it's a methodology we still need to get familiar with and 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 uh, and acquire eh? because how do you do that eh? because of course you, we're used to doing stuff in a room but um, i think we tend to forget that actually the mentor and the, and 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 the teaching stuff and following a course and really taking it step by step to really also understand what's behind the button and what's why why is the what's the reason and it's more than just in a one minute video that that you're gonna learn stuff yeah. that it, it it take it is worthwhile to to really try and 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 figure out the basics eh? yeah. and then of of course once you have the universe and you, and it opened up you you can uh, you can move on I think that's yeah. interesting we tend to 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 forget uh, that that. Uh, uh, because there's so much knowledge out there, you, you, the first reflex would be you just figure it out, go to YouTube and you find it, but it's not really a step-by-step -step plan and where you um, right. teaching. Uh, someone men mentioned to me watching a video and understanding what's in the video, something else than acquiring the skill. Right. Yeah. And, and, and again, this is a little bit our society of uh, quick gratification, right? So. We we want to know how to do something, and we try just to teach me. Teach me just this, you know. I don't want to know how you know how to tune up a guitar, how to you know hold the guitar. No, I just want to play this piece, like you know, uh, I don't know, you know, John Scofield. Um, well, well, yeah, okay, yes. but you kind of need to have a you know to get there. I mean, yeah. I see it all the time with with the students, right? And uh, and sometimes we we kind of get trapped in that. Thing too, right? We say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of a project with a client. Okay, I need to learn this. So quick, you know, quick thing. You, you learn the thing, and then in six months you you forget out, you know. So you have to go back to the YouTube video instead of learning <laughs> learning it, right? Because unfortunately, it's that quick gratification. Um, so it's it's tricky. On the other hand, I have to say, you know, there are tons of really good resources, right? So again, it's 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 balancing that. 
um, knowing first thing what are good resources and 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 that's where you know uh, peer mentoring is is important um, or or you know having more of a teacher and student type of uh, mentoring or or a class mentoring Th those are very important because um, I, I'm totally fine telling my class oh check this YouTube video you know there's some really good information because there are uh, but but that has been vetted and say okay. It, now it's time for you to watch this video because you you know all the rest and now you can you know learn from it um so yeah but it, it's a fascinating world you know i mean because as you said there's there's tons of stuff out there you know yeah it's, it's an over overload eh? um right. now would you also say you also mentioned that um you focus a lot on on the business side of um of things as well eh? how to mm -hmm. run Music as a vision. Could you, because you know Europe, how Europe works on the musician side? Would, do you see a big difference uh, between how 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 the how does a musician survive in in because we're all about business models and where are we going in the future and what's going to happen and and the fact that music is not owned anymore, it's streamed. Um, right. How do you see that uh, on the skill well, level? What is important? Well, I I think um, I think these days having some sort of business knowledge and or, or business model is is crucial. Um, and again, not necessarily means to be uh, you know having a uh, you know master of business administration, right? But but at least having uh, entrepreneurial skills, it's it's absolutely crucial. I mean, and this is true for musicians, but uh, it's true for pretty much any other uh, creative job out there. Um, you need to have um, well. First thing, I think a good, good uh, people, good people skills. I think that's always very, very important. You know, there's, there's no, there's no substitute for that. But also, you need to have the vision and the entrepreneurial skills to put your art and 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 your 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 craft um, at the service of clients right or people that want to um, uh, have something um, from you that you can provide so uh, I think that component is probably even is getting more and more important I mean and I think uh, that's one of the main difference maybe I've seen in general between um, some European areas and the US here uh, entrepreneurial um, spirit and entrepreneurial attitude is you know it's pretty strong even among younger uh, musicians um, especially now I mean where you know with the pandemic uh, you know all the business models are changing and I see that the ones that are really successful are the ones that again think how do I adapt quickly right so how do I now make my business models it could be you know uh, providing um, uh, you know recording sessions for other composers or uh, you know, co-writing music for or writing music for a TV show for 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 a film. Uh, so all the, all these things need to be crafted in your in your model. Uh, so it used to be uh, that I could just you know uh, be very good at playing one instrument and uh, and then you know kind of just go around the neighborhood like in in New York and and meet people and I would get tons of gigs right but but now that that neighbor now became became the world so um, it's it's a way bigger area and all the techniques for networking are totally different right and they keep changing constantly you know different platforms uh, you know used to be Facebook uh, now is TikTok and Instagram and you know every other uh, you know, every few months is a new platform, so you need to adapt. You need to go after that, and you need, as you said, you need to uh, be careful to choose the the correct ones for for what you want to do. So that that to me is definitely one of the more uh, challenging parts in general for for uh, younger uh, musicians or younger artists, because it takes time to um, uh, be good at at this research the platform, be good at it and and really uh use them to make an impact on your career so uh, and the problem is that you need to do that while of course acquiring and 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 having great skills as a creative person right because i mean you could have all these great entrepreneurship ideas but if you're not good at what you do mm, it makes you no know, sense. <laughs> it you, makes no sense yeah. do you see that um, i i call it a little bit creating your own um uh, skills and eh? making sure that 
that you showcase what you can do. How do you see collaborations in there? Do you see that um, uh, people who really collaborate together, is that an advantage? Or Because Absolutely. I, I have 10 musicians who call me every day during the pandemic. Oh, I want to give, I want to give, I want to teach online. I want to do this. Can you tell me? what tools should i use or shouldn't i use and then i, I think like yeah okay but there's so many uh initiatives out there how are you gonna uh float on top that people right. will discover you um uh, yeah i think collaborations are are, are absolutely absolutely essential these days i mean you know that's how you expand your network that's yeah. how you meet new people this is how you learn new techniques um you know that's 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 the basic of of uh, of expanding your your horizon right as a as a entrepreneur so absolutely collaboration are are absolutely crucial um i think um in fact what i always recommend my students is to uh first thing to do is to start a team you know um and and first thing the team gives you a uh, um, morale boost, right? Because I mean, if yeah. if if somebody is always in their basement writing great music, doing great paintings, but nobody, you know, uh, gives feedback, so nobody is aware of it, that, that's not a great model. Uh, and so having people that you collaborate with, you know, where maybe you you all co-write a song every week, or you you know you 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 shoot a short movie every week, you know, anything that involves other people gives you um, a boost in terms of like, okay, I'm going the right direction. There's other people uh, on this with me. But also um, it gives an impression of a, of a way better um, organization, right? So if I have to go and propose my service as a, a, a producer, music producer, um, you know, and and I talk to somebody and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a great producer. You know, I think, you know, this is the best thing you can ever have. I mean, of course, what am I going to say? You know, that I'm not a good producer, right? <laughs> but having a team where maybe I have a person that is dedicated to, uh, you know, outreach and, and marketing and say, hey, I represent this new production team. You know, we're a team of young young producers, young musicians. And, you know, we have, we have done this and this and this. And so it's just the way you present it. It's just way more appealing, right? It, it's and, and again, it's just an energy that you wouldn't get working on by yourself so uh, i think i always recommend doing all this all many different things at the same time right so having your own company uh but also do some your freelance work um teach a little bit uh you know having having your name going around in very different areas very different uh when we you know when before the pandemic you know play play out with your band right maybe do an album your solo album or your band album so every all these um uh venues where your name circles i think it's crucial and going back to your point about collaboration that's that's super important you know having your name going around in different circles different people somebody heard your album on you know spotify goes to your website so they say oh wow he's also doing music uh, with his uh, music production company oh i have a friend that needs some music you know that having your name going around it's it's crucial in different areas in you know i mean that's why and and it's also rewarding i think for for the individual right i mean what i love about what i do is that you know as you, as you mentioned you know, I wrote some books and I love writing, but you know I have uh, tons of YouTube um, uh, YouTube uh, tutorials that uh, you know have good reviews, and I love doing those. But then I teach at Berkeley, I do the administrative thing there, I play. So having all these things make my career very exciting. Uh, and and at the same time is it's a little bit like winning um, winning the lottery, right? You you buy as many tickets as you can, and and as as much as you can, you try to have all these different things going on, and then. You know, if you're a young, um, young professional, eventually maybe two or two or three of those things will will get more traction, and then that's why you kind of channel your career. But having that, to me, that um, di that, that uh, flexibility and, and and diversity of things that you can do, I th in my opinion, is crucial, because as we are seeing right now, right, we we we're witnessing how quickly uh, the the whole business can change right i mean in in few months just the whole thing just changed and and i one thing that i would always recommend any 
young professional is that uh, they really want to have whatever they do to be uh, like a lifelong career, right? So a sustainable career. So there's no doubt that in the span of 20, 30, 40, 50 years, things are going to change. I mean, th th not only um, externally, but also in your life, right? Things change. You have a family. You move. You yeah. have different interests, right? And no so, one, no one, well, no one tours every day of his life eh? till the end of right. His life. Exactly. And so yeah. having that that flexibility, both in your skills, uh, in the way you interact with people, the way you as you said you collaborate with people and also in your kind of business model i think it's crucial and to me it goes back to that you know seeing what the next wave is going to be and the next wave could be something that changes in the industry uh something that changes in the environment but also something that changes in your life right so uh, kind of keep an eye what's going on you know i want to maybe move to do something slightly different totally cool yeah. just make sure you have the right tools you know the right skills and the right plan yeah i can imagine that now a lot of people who have been doing things for this uh, who just have been uh, a musician doing some concerts now are really helpless um yeah, they might not yeah. even uh, have the ability or the or the mental flexibility to 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 make a shift um yeah how, do you see people like that around you is it yeah oh it's 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 it's, it's pretty brutal yeah i mean you know I, I have friends uh uh in the u.s but also in italy that i keep uh, in contact with and uh yeah i mean the night performance uh you know it's it's, it's pretty it's, much yeah. stopped you yeah. know um the also i have friends and former graduates that you know write for film and tv you know, also most of the production have stopped. So there's definitely, that's tough. I mean, and, and I would say that this has been probably the most dramatic change, right? And, and in terms of um, uh, speed at which it happened, right? I mean, yeah. uh, sometimes things, this was a definitely an, an unexpected big wave that that was impossible to predict. So th this is this is a really a tough one. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it could be the, a good moment to, uh, to pause and and again take advantage maybe of re retooling re retweaking your career uh, and see where now the next wave is going to be uh, there's no doubt that things are not going to be exactly the same um uh, be because new techniques you, you, you new opportunities uh, are going to come out out of this you know just uh, you know as you mentioned right i mean um teaching right i mean teaching probably is going to be Definitely, uh, there's going to be more online teaching. So that creates opportunities. Uh, going back to the democratization of, of, of the system, right? It's like, well, I mean, if you're good at, uh, you could have your own online uh, curriculum, you know, yeah. available to to anybody and you, know, you can charge and you can, you know, so... Uh, that's a good thing. Of course, there are tons of people that are going to try to do the same. So yeah. you have to put your own spin. That's, you know? Yeah, and and that is where your community is an important uh, thing. Eh? Um, I see uh, a lot of people trying to do crowdfunding and, and things like that, but it's really trying to get a sustainable model where you offer services not for free, eh? because I saw all these amazing arts is just and i i understand it's a, out of a reflex i'm gonna do something and i'm just gonna play music and give it for free and you stream for free but it's uh there is a value uh yeah that that is important that 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 you also see that as a value proposition eh? yeah yeah that's always a tough balance uh, and 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 I would say it's a tough balance always in a, when things are you know normal like when there's a normal business going on. Now it's even harder. I mean, it, it, again, all the parameters are a little bit uh, up, down. Uh, up, yeah, up and down now. It's 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 really hard. I think I think uh, at the moment there's gonna be first first of all like a survival uh, mode, right? Saying okay, well I you know. Let's let's keep moving for the next six months uh, while I retool, while I, you know, and then 
a new wave will start. Um, but um, the, the balance between making doing things for free versus you know um, being paid is it's a very tricky thing. Uh, it's a very tricky balance. Uh, I, I you know I definitely say as a star as a general point don't, yeah don't don't do things for free on the other hand i think you need to see and and um sometimes you do things for free because you you love the project and i think that's that's okay uh the project maybe brings you good connections or good networking you expand your network so th there are there are occasions where i think it's it's okay you know uh, but you need to do that balance, uh, and, and sometimes um, it's a, that's a tough call. Um, so I, you know, sometimes there are opportunities where that that might come up from something you did for free, um, and of course it, that's, that the balance is harder if you like in a moment like this one. You know, if you really need to make, uh, you know, your rent or you know or or, or you know, put food on the table, and 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 you know that's 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 really tough but on the other hand i mean just to give a little more of a hopeful message i think um i think there are opportunities out there and 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 the the, the it's it, the good thing is that there are, i i think there are more opportunities but they might be in a different slightly from a different slightly from a slightly different angle from which we are looking at things and so Again, if I'm a performer and, and and I'm trying only to look for gigs that are, uh, for example, you know, playing in an orchestra, uh, well, yeah, th th this is gonna be very hard. Uh, on the other hand, look, let's look at you know which other skills I bring to the table, right? Maybe I'm I'm very good at um, explaining uh, things, so you know, teaching could be an option. Or I'm very good with technology. Uh, I'm very good at um, uh, I'm very organized, and I can you know maybe provide my service to other musicians or other um, uh, organizations that require that uh, that knowledge about music but also organizational skills so I think uh, again it comes down it comes back to uh, entrepreneurship you know try to look uh, try to look where things are and usually I see that uh, where when 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 things are when when you really need something, uh, then things happen. You know, so you have to uh, be in that situation where okay, hey, there's no other way here. I need to find something that fits my skill and my knowledge, and um, and things will happen because again, as I said, now you have to look at the entire world as your neighborhood. Yeah. It's not anymore as your 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 your, your, your around your, your block or about your, your city or your region or even your country. It's about well. There are things all over the world, yeah. and maybe you know, uh, n knowing different languages, that's a you know big big help because again, you know, there might be people that want to learn uh, singing in Italian, right? Uh, in in China, you know, I mean, so there are people that want to learn things. They they need services. Uh, it's just a question of finding it and 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 match those those uh, you know. And, and indeed, because the world is your oyster, eh, you do have people who have the same taste, who have the, but it's finding those uh, those people who are in the same mindset. Eh? Now suddenly it's that you can find them all over the world. Eh? I yeah. think the underground scene has, has done that uh, a lot. I, I, I talk to um, uh, people who are in drag uh, or drag queens. They have now jobs via uh, all across the world, just via Instagram. So uh -huh. it's also looking at who's in, in your niche and, and who connects with, with what you're doing and trying to, to build up those communities. So the more yeah. teams, the more you can collaborate, the, the, the better. I, I, I'm, I'm also a strong believer of that. Absolutely. Now, now we had a, a contest at the public broadcaster I, I work with in, in Belgium about creating music with AI. I know there's a lot of tooling out there we have now um, ai used to fingerprint music uh, to help you discover music meaning that it's it's not going to be easy to uh, because it's an algorithm that will determine what you get uh, look at what spotify does on the recommendation level how do you see that 
uh, what does a musician do you need to know or understand about those new um, well fears that a lot of people have that uh, because you can right. make music with AI if you want <laughs> well I but think that's an interesting <laughs> yeah that's an interesting uh, again a, a new interesting wave I think that's gonna be huge it's gonna be huge and again if we if we base all our business on writing music for TV or for documentaries or sometimes even for commercial. Well, I think that's going to be the next big disrupting wave because, uh, I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but in the next few years, I mean, uh, there are definitely computer models that can recreate pretty convincingly uh, different styles of music, especially styles that are fairly generic, things like you would use in a music library, for example, right? Um, which are used in you know a big percentage of you know documentaries and TV series and so on uh, commercials and um, so uh, so that's that's um, you could see, look at that as a worrying uh, you know a wave but but again I think we have to look at the positive side right so again if that's going to happen how can we um, help <laughs> you know how can we be on the side uh, where we can provide a service for these companies from this new software. And I think, you know, most of these um, uh, models, uh, no matter what, in order to create the, the actual music, they will always need uh, the basic elements of that music to be created, right? So they will need uh, maybe a library of phrases, a library of uh, harmonic progressions, a library of sounds from which the eventually the computer will, will pick and will uh, match to create different styles, right? Um, um, there are already software where, you know, I think we were talking about it the other day, where, uh, you know, you, a, a movie director or could just choose a cue based on, you know, um, how romantic you want it, how scary you want it, you know, if you want it uh, th more thick or less thick or, you know, more modern or less modern. Or, so, uh, but, but the basic elements still need to be um, fed uh, by a musician, right? So the the, the basic uh, building block, they're still, you know, human created, um, the, and and also, I mean, these companies need uh, consultants, right? I mean, uh, because you know, um, what makes a cue scary or versus uh, happy versus sad versus romantic, right? So um, usually, um, probably a, a software engineer wouldn't be the best person to to make those calls or to find out what they are, are the nuances are to then make a cue in a certain way. So I think uh, I, the roles of new mus you know, younger musicians uh, would be to uh, not only to have the musical skills, but also have the technical skills. And again, the um, communication skills to talk to uh, software engineers to, to create these things. Uh, you know, I know many people that join Apple uh, you know, from the musical type of um, team, right, to um, to help understanding, you know, how uh, logic, for example, can be improved, uh, you know. So all those new jobs, all those new uh, opportunities are available, you know. Of course, the training is to be um, targeted to include also some sort of, uh, you know, uh, basic engineering uh, knowledge, but, but, but these are all jobs for musicians, right, that... that yeah. If they're open, uh, yeah. they can have... I, I think you touch a very interesting subject. Eh? It's actually um, what you see is that the, 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 the different roles we are used to looking at, eh? where you have a, a producer who's, uh, who's producing, and it's all merging more and more together. Uh, and, and you will have people who will be between uh, the music and the IT. Eh? Uh, yeah. And and those roles haven't defined been defined yet. Um, uh, for instance, yeah. uh, uh, Musio it's a it's a fingerprinting tool. Hazel is is the CEO. She was very um, uh, into uh, music. She used to work at Shazam, uh, mm -hmm. and she took it from there. But she's a musician at heart. Right. Eh? Right. So, but right. she learned the skills of not being afraid of the technical side and trying to right. to to combine. I I, I completely uh, I I agree. Yeah? Um, right. So, but it's the again looking at what is the wave that will be there, um, and I always always say to 
anyone. We all start from scratch because if it's a completely new wave, it means you can jump on the wagon uh, right. because it's it's ground zero for everyone to start. Right. From, uh, you all start at 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 the at the start. Point right. with the same skills and it's it's you can reinvent yourself huh? it's a, right. it's, a, it's indeed i haven't looked at it in the music business it's an interesting um point to look at now um i'm just i'm just uh, looking at uh, my my checklist mm -hmm. uh i think we already touched uh, touched a lot there eh? um how do you yeah so we, we touched the creativity do you see um do you see because we talked about m musicians do you see within the different um uh, people playing do you see a difference between the, the contemporary music musicians and the really very uh, people who are very classical skilled do, do you see mm -hmm. there a, a big difference or a big um well i mean there's always been you know um a, a little bit of a divide right between different uh educations like in music sorry yeah, i studied you know, jazz music and improvise right but but uh but i see that now these are really really blending more and more which is i think is a great thing yeah. i mean to me to me the the, the best thing these days is to see musicians that uh, you know they're classically trained, but they're playing with jazz musicians that, but they're playing and with including world instruments and harmonies and rhythms from you know the Middle East. I mean, to me, that's the one of the best thing that is coming out from all this globalization of, of uh, you know of, of of music. I mean, uh, one thing I, I love about Berkeley is that we have students from uh, all over the world, and you literally you know walk down the hall and in a practice room you hear you know. Uh, 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 Arabian instrument uh, with the uh, electric guitar and you know uh, African percussion and 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 a uh, you know Korean singer you know and it's like uh, the music that comes out of that is amazing and and there's a lot of cross pollination between different departments and so different you know um, backgrounds like so quote unquote the classical ones with the electronic ones with the more contemporary and commercial one so um so i think those divides are are more blurred um and i think it's still important though to keep your uh, originality right the, your your unique voice in order to again stand out right so you, yeah. you were talking about it before how, how can somebody stand out between all this quote-unquote noise or you know um, crowd um and it's just originality you know have your own voice i mean follow what what's true to you uh, both as a player, as a performer, as an artist in general, I think this when when somebody is true to himself or herself when they create music or or any type of art, um, things are gonna happen. Yeah, you know, uh, if you don't feel that that's you, um, no matter what, even if you're trying, even if they ask you to recreate somebody else's music, right? Sometimes it happens, right? When they give us a temp track and things like that. Uh, no matter what, though. You need to feel that you are contributing in a unique way, and if if you do that, things are gonna happen. Yeah, I was just wondering how because yeah, I come from an 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 image background. Huh? Uh, how in in how in how do you see that evolving? Because do you feel that that video is becoming more and more important as a skill as a musician? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, these days your music doesn't exist if there's not a video attached to it. Yeah. You know, that's that's just the reality. Uh, because of YouTube, because of uh, just we are in a very visual, uh, you know, um, environment. And um, uh, if, if, if there's nothing visual attached to it, it's, it's, it's hard. I'm not saying that it's, it, it, you know, it doesn't exist, but, you know, it, it exists, but it's, it's, it's harder to have a, a younger generation relate to it. Yeah. Um, and also it's harder to, um, again, to have uh, followers and to have people following you. And so, yes, a, a, a visual element is really, really important. I mean, there, there are a few exceptions, right? I mean, but um, especially now that live performances are, uh, you know, uh, due to the pandemic are less 
uh, you know, uh, less available, uh, the, the 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 visual thing is is huge. You yeah. know, we want to. That's how we relate to the artist, right? It's how we we see a live performance on YouTube, or but it's rare. I mean, I I do it because I love music, and I still put a record, you know, on, and there's no no screen on it, but. Uh, but I can see the younger generation that's uh, less and less um, an Definitely, option, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's something we, we, we might not always think about when we talk about, about music, eh? And that's, and that's, again, that's where collaboration is great, you know? Uh, I mean, again, for somebody that starts now, uh, I would highly recommend, you know, uh, hooking up with the videographer and say, well, okay, I have, I do the music, you know, please put a video on this and we're, we're going to advertise it as, as a team and we put it on YouTube and now suddenly you have a team that can provide, you know, either visual to music or music to visual or sometimes both if somebody needs it, you know. Um, but that collaboration, as you mentioned, it's a big, big element. Yeah, and if you then take the leap up front and you use uh, AI and, and visual and immersive and then take it to the next level, you know, right. who knows where you, where you might end up with it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and also I think there's more industries than, than the classic one. Gaming industries also, uh, also, also needs music and, and, uh, and background sounds. And so I think it's indeed keeping keeping your eyes open to to whatever is out there. And the next wave, I will remember that. I think that's a nice quote. Now I wanted to check with you because um, I think we covered the, we covered a lot. Um, what would you? Because I have after this the five questions I ask in short yep. to, to team. Mm -hmm. What would you? What would you say? Um, uh because i give you the last word of of this uh, this session to someone who's who's listening out there and feeling a bit like okay what's next uh, um what would you say to them well i would say that again be positive i mean things again if 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 there's no other things that you can do right so th this if you mu if music or arts or you know whatever arts you're you're into uh, is the only thing that you want to do, things are gonna work out because you're gonna have passion. And if there is passion and you uh, acquire or have already the skills, things are gonna work out. These are gonna happen. Um, be f uh, flexible. Be um, uh, be able to to provide different services uh, to you know different type of clients. Um, try to be um, always positive in terms of like working with other people. Uh, that's that's a big skill, um, you know, that you have to acquire. If if not, if, if because you can be the best, uh, you know, bass player in the world, but if you're not nice and and people don't want to work with you, this this does not going to happen. Um, and again, and just look at your life, your career as as lifelong career. To me, that's the, the key point. It's you need to be versatile. You know, try to be versatile. Be open to new things that that you might not even have considered before. Uh, be uh, receptive to new things. Be receptive to inputs, but always, of course, from a, from with with a very um, you know not, not giving up your 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 own personality, your own creativity, your own you know your your own angle when it comes to creation, right? So you need to keep that going. And as you said, always look for the next wave. See what's going to happen. Uh, talk to peers. Find a mentor. I mean, absolutely. You know, find a mentor. Find some peers that you can talk to. Find a peers that you can meet meet up with, um, and get some inspiration from them. And if possible, start a team. You know, absolutely start a team, start working. It could be a team of two or three, four people, but that's to me, it's, it's crucial. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to the to the the 20 minute sessions. People who want to dive into the iPad, they can then, you know, all the yeah. people say, ah, oh, I don't believe it. Uh, that's that's where they need to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I have the 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 uh, the five uh, questions. So, mm -hmm. uh, and Andrea, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. And I know it's, uh, uh, well, you might have a president next time we meet. Eh? <laughs> so, so. Uh, so here we come. 